So in the previous video, uh, we saw about uh, transverse and longitudinal vibrations. In this video, in this short video, uh, we will be uh, discussing about the torsional vibration. So what do you mean by a torsional vibration? So let us consider uh, a shaft here. So a shaft is assumed to be uh, weightless and fixed at one end. And let us assume that it is carrying a heavy disc or a flywheel at the free end. And it is allowed to um, you know, vibrate in a circular fashion about the axis of the shaft when you apply or by the application of an external torque on the disc. So after the initial displacement, let us remove the external torque and observe. So what will happen? The shaft is twisted and untwisted alternately and shear stresses are induced. So this, um, you know, this kind of movement is called as a torsional vibration. In this short video, we will be discussing about single rotor system, frictional torsional vibrations in a two rotor system, three rotor system and uh, one more thing, the torsionally equivalent shaft. So we will also be seeing a number of uh, examples, solved examples, I will be explaining to you step by step. So what do you mean by a node, single node frequency, two node frequency and so on. Okay, now we'll uh, start with. Uh, so, in this case, so this is a single rotor. It's a single rotor uh, system which is subjected to an external torque. So, the twisting and untwisting circular uh, vibration takes place. I think it's a torsional vibration takes place. So, we have uh, to G is the modulus of rigidity of the shaft material and Q is the torsional stiffness of the shaft and this Q value is equal to capital G J divided by L and this J is the polar moment of inertia of the shaft cross section. At any instant the torques acting on the disc or inertia torque will, be, torque will be acting and the restoring torque will be acting. So it is minus I double dot theta is the inertia torque and the restoring, restoring torque also called as a spring torque is equal to minus Q theta. So this Q is the torsional stiffness of the shaft. And you have a simple expression I uh, dot dot theta plus Q theta and finally you will get a simple harmonic equation that is omega n is equal to square root of Q by I. So Q is the torsional stiffness of the shaft and I is the moment of inertia of the shaft. And as usual, uh, the Fn value is given by 1 by 2 pi square root of Q by I. Okay. Now we will move to the free torsional vibrations of a two rotor system. So you have uh, a, a, a shaft, we have two rotors A and B. And let us consider the shaft held in bearings carries a rotor at each end. It can vibrate torsionally such that the two rotors move in the opposite direction. So A moves in one direction and B moves in the opposite direction. So the some uh, length of the shaft is twisted in one direction. So in this case, let us consider it is, mo it is uh, moving in a clockwise fashion. This is in the, uh, the anti-clockwise fashion. So some kind of a twisting will take place on the shaft. And there will also there will always be a place where See this portion is the unaffected portion. It is free of any torsional effect. So imagine you hold uh, your friend's hand and you try to twist, twist it. So beyond a particular, see uh, the your uh, that is the twisting effect will uh, will end at a particular point. Say it will start with the fingers. It will move towards the wrist and maybe just below the elbow. See assume this as a hand. So just below the elbow, there is a portion where the torsional effect will that is will not be there. So when you try to twist your uh, your friend's hand by holding his uh, fingers or holding his wrist or his palm. So there will be a portion 
in his hand which, which will not be affected this portion is called the node so the section which doesn't undergo any twist is called the nodal section the shaft behaves as if clamped at the nodal section so it, it behaves as if it is clamped at the nodal section and the two sections vibrate as two separate shafts with equal frequencies hope you are able to follow this step so this portion is unaffected portion called the nodal uh, section and the shaft behaves as if it is clamped at the nodal section so as if it is clamped here as this moves in the clockwise direction this moves in the anti clockwise direction and this portion is the area where the where it is free of the torsional effect so it moves as if it is clamped at the nodal section so if la is a la or lb and lb lengths of the two portions of the shaft and ia and ib a, mom a moment of inertia of the rotors a and b respectively and uh, q we saw that uh, there is a torsional st stiffness of lengths la and lb of the shaft respectively so this is the nodal part this is the length of the length uh, this la represents the length from the rotor to the nodal section similarly from from b rotor to the nodal section is lb and um, the natural frequency of torsional vibrations of rotor a and b respectively are fna and fnb then vibrating these two you'll be getting a final uh, that is 1 by 2 pi square root of qa by ia which is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of qb by ib finally you will get this expression that is la by lb is equal to ib I, that is ib by uh, lb and finally it is ia into la is equal to ib into lb so this is the expression we'll be getting thus the node divides the length of the shaft in the inverse ratio of the moment of inertia of the rotors so this node divides the length of the shaft in the inverse inverse ratio of the moment of inertia of the two rotors that is what being said here so la by ib is equal to ib by lb so amplitude of rotor a and amplitude of rotor b is equal to a suffix a a suffix b which is equal to la by lb so this is the expression for a free torsional vibrations of a two rotor system okay now consider now we will come to the uh, three rotor system so in this case we have three rotors a b and c and consider three rotor system in which uh, the two rotors a and b are fixed at the ends of the shaft the rotor c is in between let rotors a and b rotate in the same direction and c in the opposite direction so let us consider uh, a and b they are rotating the clockwise direction and this rotates in the anti clockwise direction so let us then what will be the effect now so it is very obvious that at point d and point e are the nodal sections since a rotates in one particular direction c rotates in one particular direction that is that is opposite direction whereas b with respect to c is rotating in a different direction so a and b they have the same rotations and c has rotates opposite to that of a and b so there are two nodal sections are uh, obtained at d and e have the nodal sections and as usual uh, you know v l1 is the uh, length c from a to c this is the their presence l1 and from uh, c center of the uh, uh, rotor uh, c and that of rotor b will be this uh, this length will be l2 and this is la which we saw here so from the nodal section to the uh, to, to this to the rotor a is la similarly here also the same one so this is a nodal section d2 la and this is from lc1 lc1 is uh, there is a nodal section to the uh, c rotor is lc1 so in other words if you want to find what is la it will be l1 minus lc1 or what is uh, um, lc1 will be l1 minus la similarly here also e is another nodal section so this is lc2 this is lb now see what is going to happen so this is the uh, common uh, thing that the, the one which we saw earlier the same kind of an expression you will be getting that is uh, you, you get all the three uh, free natural frequencies and as usual if ib ia ib l uh, ic with the mass moments of inertia of rotors a b c respectively and l1 l2 and la and lc are the distances as indicated in the diagram 
So if when you get this, you'll be getting this expression. That is Q A by L A is equal to Q B by L Q U Q Q B by L B is equal to Q C by L C. And finally, the torque required to produce unit twist of C is the sum of torques required to produce unit twist in each of the lengths L C one, L C one, and L C two. So when you equate, uh, you'll be getting this kind of an expression. That is G J by L A into I A is equal to 1 by IC into GJ by uh, LC1 plus GJ by LC2, and uh, it is also equal to GJ divided, divided by LB into IB. So J is the polar moment of inertia, and G also we already saw in the first expression. Similar modulus rigidity of the shaft material. Okay, now we will come to uh, this uh, particular expression. See here the values LA and LB. You'll be getting two sets of values because uh, finally, when you solve this out, you'll be getting a quadratic equation. So you have to uh, use the uh, uh, formula that is minus e plus or minus square root of uh, b square minus 4ac divided by 2a, and you'll be getting one set of values given by the quadratic equation gives the position of two nodes and the frequency that's obtained is known as a two-node frequency. So you'll be getting two values for LA and two values for LB because it's a quadratic equation. We'll be seeing uh, uh, this quad. Uh, how why, why we get two values in a moment in a in the, in the upcoming um, slides. And before that, uh, we'll consider a scenario. See, uh, in the other set of values, one gives the position of a single node, and the other is beyond the physical limits of the equation. The frequency so obtained is not the single node frequency or the fundamental frequency. So the single node and two node is what we are going to solve in this problem. If you see this. You'll be able to understand uh, that there are two values uh, for L A and two values for L B. So we'll be seeing how to solve this uh, in this example. For the time being, we'll go back to the expression. So this is the expression. Yeah. So this is the expression. Remember, make a note of this expression. So we'll be using this for a three rotor system. Now let us consider a scenario here. See, if A and C rotate in the same direction and B rotates in the opposite direction, a single node is obtained between B and C. So, if A and C rotates in the same direction and B rotates in the opposite direction, what will happen? So, A and C will form a pair, and the node will be formed in between B and C. That is what being shown here. So, if A and C they rotate in the same direction, say clockwise. And if C about and if B is made rotate in the anti-clockwise direction, the node will form not here, but it will form here between C and B. And L A doesn't give the actual node point. And single node is obtained between B and C. This is a figure 18.41C. And L A will not give the actual node point. So when you extend this line, the dotted line, so this is the position of, so this position doesn't give the actual node point, and this as then as usual, this is L C two, that is from C, this is L C two. So the node will be th this portion is actually the the node the the load will act on this area. So in this portion. And again, if B and C rotate in the same direction and A in the opposite direction, so if B and C rotate in the same direction and A in the opposite direction, the node will not form here, but it will form here. That is what being shown here. This is what being shown here. We'll understand the three rotor system uh, in this uh, example. So in this example, I will explain to you in detail. How to obtain the different values? So, how to obtain the amplitudes of a single node vibration or fundamental frequency? How to obtain this, and even the two node frequency? So, in the case of for a two node frequency, uh, we have to use the lesser of the two values. So, I'll be showing to you in this in in the, in the simple example. We'll go back to the uh, expression, and as usual, uh, let a uh, there is a suffix a, a suffix b, a suffix c. Be the amplitudes of rotors so A, comma B and C respectively, and uh, sim similar to the single rotor system, single rotor system which we saw. Sorry, uh, there is two rotor system we saw. The same expression holds 
here too. So A sub x is divided by A sub x is equal to L A divided by L C one and A sub x b by A C A C is equal to L B divided by L C two. So this L C one and L C two represents this distance. This distance in the case of a two node frequency when A and B rotate in the same direction and C rotates in a different direction. And as I told you, D and E represents the nodal sections where it is free of the torsional effect. Okay. See, in general, possible number of node points and frequencies is one less than the number of rotors in the torsional vibrating system. Similarly, if B and C rotate in the same direction, uh, the A in the opposite direction, a single node is obtained between A and C, and this is the same. The same thing is uh, repeated here also. So this is the final expression a sub x a divided by a sub x is equal to l a divided by l c1 and a sub x b a c is equal to l b divided by l c2 in general possible number of node points and frequencies is one less than the number of rotas in torsional vibrating system okay anyway you'll be able to understand better with the uh with, the, with, the, with an example problem okay now we will move to the torsionally equivalent shaft Okay, now we will come to uh, another important uh, subject, the torsionally equivalent shaft. So why should we go for a torsionally equivalent shaft? And what is the torsionally equivalent shaft? See, torsionally equivalent shaft is a shaft of uniform diameter which twists to, through the same angle as the actual shaft of different diameters and different lengths when equal and opposite torques of given amount are applied. You will see uh, in this figure, you can see here. So, we have different diameters say D1, D2, D3, and D4. And uh, a torsional equivalent shaft is a shaft of a uniform diameter. So, we assume a, a common diameter say D is chosen. Diameter D is usually chosen as one of the existing diameters of the stepped shaft. So, why should we do it? Why should we uh, go for a torsional equivalent shaft? Because it will be convenient for us in order, to in order to determine the frequency of such a system because if you have a shafts of different uh, diameters then you will be having a different frequencies. So a torsional equivalent shaft is one in which has the same torsional stiffness as that of the stepped shaft so that it twists to the same extent under a given torque as the stepped shaft would. You know, if you see in the actual practice, if you see the rotors are fixed to a shaft which may have different diameter for different lengths. So, if you want to find the frequency of such a system, the shaft of different diameters for different lengths is replaced by a torsional equivalent shaft of uniform diameter. So, that is done in order to, you know, just for the sake of convenience. You know, so, the most convenient manner of finding the frequency of such a system is by replacing the shaft with a torsional equivalent shaft of having a suitable diameter. So we have to assume generally it is taken as if we have a number of diameters say this is the shaft it has a number of diameters d1, d2, d3, d4 they all vary. So what we do is we take a common diameter say d and it is usually chosen as one of the existing diameters of the stepped shaft. So this is a stepped shaft there is a number of steps with different diameters. So let us consider, let us let theta be the total twist in the shaft and then apply torque T and theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4 are, uh, are the individual twists in sections L1, L2, L3 and L4 respectively. So the total twist is given by theta is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 plus theta 4 and we know the uh, expression theta is given by uh, the product of uh, torque into length divided by the product of uh, modulus fragility into the polar moment of inertia that is TL divided by GJ and uh, you know this expression similar TL1 divided by uh, GJ1 that is L1, L2, L3 and L4 so you get a, this expression when you substitute the value of J in it J is given this is a polar moment of inertia of the cross section of the shaft is given by pi by 32 d power 4 we know what is J J is the polar moment of inertia of the shaft's cross section. So the expression is pi by 32 d power 4 
so this d is the actual assumption that we make so we take diameter d as a chosen diameter so that the uh, there is a torsionally equivalent shaft system is obtained and when you substitute the values and you cancel off pi by 32 this is the final expression you get and there's a simple uh, substitution and simple cancelling with pi by 32 you know, just cancel it out so this expression you'll be obtaining we will be getting l divided by d power 4 is equal to l is the total length of the shaft torsionally equivalent shaft and uh, this d represents the uh, chosen diameter and d1 d2 d3 d4 are the individual diameter so this is the value of l so this l value is the length of the torsionally equivalent shaft so this is a very very uh, important uh, topic in torsional vibrations we will be seeing a number of examples so this is the final expression l is equal to l1 into d here by d1 the whole power 4 these are the individual diameters this is the uh, chosen diameter so we will see uh, it with a simple example uh, so the shaft shown in the figure 18.4 carries two masses the mass a is 300 kg with, with uh, k value is 0.75 and m is given as uh, m of b is uh, 500 kg with its k value as 0.9 meter so we have to find the frequency of torsional vibration and it is decided that uh, to have the node at the mid section of the shaft of 120 mm dia by changing the diameter of section having a 90 mm diameter so what will be the new diameter so obviously this is a two rotor system a and b this is a two rotor system so the first step would be the reducing the shaft to a torsionally equivalent shaft of diameter 100 mm diameter so I told you one of the uh, diameters are usually taken so we will take D D value that is torsionally equivalent uh, shaft's diameter D value as 100 so substitute the formula so it is the length of torsional equivalent shaft which we saw here the same uh, expression you have to substitute the values so if 100 is D1, D2, D3 and D4 and find the total length of the torsionally equivalent shaft so this found out as around 1001.5 mm and to locate the node point we know what is the expression that is the product of ia into la is equal to ib into lb which we already saw and in the case of a two rotor system so this expression ia la is equal to ib into lb and to locate the node point so where the actual node takes place you know in a two rotor system the node section we already saw in the example in the expression here so in this uh, example figure so it's a two rotor system the unaffected portion is the node portion so it have it happens somewhere here it happens from the distance of la from and uh, there is rotor a or lb from rotor b so uh, the node will, happen, will take place somewhere around here so this portion it will behave as if it is clamped at, at this is this area which we already saw the shaft behaves as if clamped at the nodal section and the two sections vibrate as two separate shafts with equal frequencies okay now we'll go to the uh, problem uh, so we, so using this you know the expression for uh, moment of inertia that is mk square using this we'll be able to determine what is the value of la that is this value may be determined this value may be determined the LA distance of uh, the node from the uh, rotor A and using LA and you know what is LB LB will be L minus LA again you will go back to the diagram unfortunately it is not given in the uh, example problem so if L is the total length so what is LB LB will be L minus LA LB is L minus LA from this we find out the value of uh, LA so instead of LB we have L minus LA so L LA can be found out and finally the frequency can also be found out by 1 by 2 pi square root of GJ by A into LA so finally this power was found out on 13.2 hertz now 
So in the, no, in the second, uh, in the question is given as it is decided to have the node at the midsection of the shaft of 120 mm dia by changing the diameter of the section having a 90 mm diameter. So this is the 90 mm diameter. This is the 120 mm diameter. So it is decided to have the node at the midsection of the shaft of 120 mm dia. So the node will take place in this area. So node point is said to be at the midsection of the shaft of the 120 mm dia. So LA is given by 300 plus 31.16 the same one. We will be using this formula and uh, one change we are going to make is here this area 125 uh, 100 by 120 th this value will be half of it because it is given as we say to have the node point the mid section of the shaft of 1 mm 120 mm dia so this is the mid section of the 120 mm dia this area 120 mm dia shaft so we have to divide this by 2 so this is as usual that is uh, d into uh, sorry uh, l1 that is l1 d divided by d1 the whole power 4 and as usual uh, 160 that is l2 into d you know, 100 mm that is 100 we have chosen divided by 150 d2 the whole power 4 plus 125 so this 125 plus 100 into 100 divided by 120 the whole power 4 Whereas in this case, since the node point is said to be at the mid section of the shaft with 120 mm dia, so only half of the value is taken. That's the reason why there is otherwise here 125 by 100, 120 whole power 4 divided by 2, half of it, because it is given as node point as if the node point is occurring at the mid section of the shaft with 120 mm dia. So divide this by half. So LA may be found out. LA may be found out is around, uh, around uh, 0.361 uh, meter. And similarly, mk square will lay the same formula we will be using here and from this you can also find what is the value of lb. There is lb may be found out, lb value. And let d be the new diameter of that last section of the shaft and then lb is given by half of 125. It is from here, 125 from here. So, you will be taking this portion. So, half 125, half the way is because we are taking it as a mid section mid section of the 120 mm uh, shaft so lb is given by uh, 1 by 2 uh, 125 that is 125 l1 divided by uh, 100 divided by 120 so this one plus 400 this value divided by uh, d whole power 4 from this we, we can find out because lb already we found out as 0.15 meter so we what what is being asked is what will be the new diameter so new diameter is what is being asked so he has given you see from this from this expression so, so from this uh, data uh, from the problem we will be able to find out what is the value of lb so you are going uh, from the reverse in the reverse direction so we found out what is the value of lb from here we are going to find out what is the d value this value d value this is the new diameter so new diameter is found out around 135 mm for this condition, if the node point occurs at the mid section of the shaft 120 mm dia, let D be the new diameter of the last section of the shaft. So, the last section of the shaft, because it is given here, it is decided to have a node at the mid section of the shaft by changing the diameter of the section having a 90 mm diameter. So, when you change uh, this value, you have to find what is the new diameter. So, new diameter is followed on 135 mm. Okay, in this example, uh, 18.26, so we see a three rotor system. So, torsional equivalent shaft, same of a three rotor system. So, uh, this uh, problem is based on the uh, explanation which was given for a three rotor system. So, uh, let me again uh, recap. So, we have uh, two rotors, uh, A and B rotating in the same direction c rotates in a different direction opposite direction so two nodes are formed so this uh, two nodes are from the case of a single node frequency you will assume that a and c they are rotating in the same direction b rotates in, in opposite direction so node will be formed here between b and c and if uh, b and c rotates in the same direction a in the opposite direction then the node will be formed here 
so in this area so keep this in mind and we will approach the problem so we have uh, an engine flywheel a propeller and we have two different uh, diameters uh, this is 45 mm and this is uh, 40 mm and the distance are also given uh, 2 meter 4 meter and uh, you know this is a three rotor system so in this case we'll see this x this uh, figure uh, c represents a two node frequency so when a two node frequency will occur this will occur when a and b they have the same rotations rotational move the directions and this moves in the opposite direction see if this, for example if this both a and b moves in a clockwise direction and c moves in the anti clockwise direction then two nodes will be formed so this is node node 1 this is node 2 so you call this a two node frequency whereas here figure d this is a single node frequency which we saw now with a and c since the node is occurring somewhere around here in this area so in this case a and c is rotating one direction p is rotating in the opposite direction so if that happens a single node is formed between b and c okay for the time being we will start with the uh, so at the inception you can see um let the engine propeller and flywheel are present by the rotors a b c okay uh, reducing the reducing the system to torsional equivalent shaft of 40 mm dia so we, uh, we have 40 fi and 40 mm we'll assume this we'll take take 40 mm as the uh, diameter of the torsional equivalent shaft so we know the expression we know to find what is l1 so this is l1 so this portion is l1 so how will you find the l1 value go back to the formula which we already saw even in this example also so this example so if l1 is given by so this, this is L is given by the total uh, length of the torsional equivalent shaft but we need only this value L1 so if we, we need only this value L1 then L1 is equal to uh, so you know what is that is this value I'll check once again so this is this value that is this is L1 so we will consider L this is L1 is equal to this distance L and D we know the chosen diameter that is so 40 divided by 45 mm the whole power form the same expression we are going to find only the first portion that is l1 only we are going to find out hope you are able to follow this step and the l1 so this l1 is found as 1.247 meter and similarly the expression you know the ia into la is equal to ib into lb so from this we'll we will be able to find out an expression for lb so lb is 0.6 times of la because ia and uh, 50 is given uh, there is ia and ib is given as 30 kg meters this is the this is the inertia value moment of inertia value so this uh, so uh, the expression will be lb is equal to 0.6 of la now we'll go to the next step So the next step we know the expression that is 1 by ia into la is, is equal to 1 by ic um, that is 1 by into uh, bracket of 1 by l1 minus la plus 1 by l2 minus uh, i think the, uh, there's a printing mistake in the book it is actually l2 minus lb l2 minus lb or you can also say it as 1 by ic is equal to 1 by lc1 plus 1 by lc2 so this is nothing but lc1 this is lc2 so here so if this is l1 see so this is l1 from here see the whole portion is l1 so l1 minus la will give you lc1 so this l1 minus la is lc1 l2 minus la is that is so if, if this is l2 see this is l again a printing mistake in the book see this is l1 this, this must be l2 so this l2 that is from here to here will be l2 so this l2 minus lb will be lc2 this lc2 so what is lc1 what is lc2 lc2 is the distance of the node from the center 
that is this center of the this is the center rotor this rotor see this here is a flywheel and this lc1 represents the distance of the node from again the flywheel of the rotor a so in this case in this side in this side and uh, or else you can even go back to the uh, explanation of a three rotor system so this formula we found out from this one remember just make a note of this formula so in this case yeah same so from here uh, as i already uh, told you about the uh, quadratic equation we will be getting two values one set of values for la and one another set of values for lb uh, using the i think it's very uh, easy minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4c divided by 2a so from that you will be obtaining two values of la and two values of lb and for two node frequency you know la, LA is 0.913 meter so this uh, value la will be 0.913 meter and in this case this lb value will be 0.548 meter this value so in the case of a two node frequency in the case of a two node frequency i repeat two node frequency occurs when a and b rotates in the same direction c rotor rotates in the opposite direction opposite to a and b so that occurs two node frequency in the case of two node frequency you have to take the least of the two values of la and lb remember this la and l you have to take the least of the two values so for a two node frequency because it occurs somewhere around here and this occurs here so least of the two values for two node frequency so l is equal to 0.913 meter and however um, lb is 0.548 meter so l is given by 0.913 into 40 by uh, 40 is the assumed diameter that is a uh, torsion equivalent shaft diameter and divided by 45 so here so la so this value la is given by 0.913 meter the one which we found for a two node frequency into 40 divided by 45 the whole power 4 and finally the actual la may be found as 1.462 meter 1.462 meter this is the case of a two node frequency and this la i hope you are able to follow this step this la is the least of the two values i repeat and when you substitute this value here the actual la may be found out the actual la may be found out so it is found around 1.462 meter now and you know what is the uh, uh, expression for uh, fn value distortional frequency is going to be 1 by 2 pi sort of gj divided by i into la substitute the values and you'll be getting as for 4.41 hertz for the amplitude, amplitude also uh, which we already saw ac by a is equal to lc1 divided by la what is lc1 lc1 is l1 minus la so what is lc1 lc1 is l1 minus la and uh, from this we will be we have to assume that ac where a is a suffix a this amplitude of the rotor a is assumed as one radians so you'll be getting the amplitude for the third rotor ac so it's given a 0.366 uh, radians and finally we know the other expression that is ab by ac is equal to lb by lc2 where did we get this amplitude ratio we already we saw in this expression this here you already saw here this is for the two rotor system so make a note of this this is for the sorry uh, three rotor system for a three rotor system so this expression so substitute the values and you'll be getting the amplitude ac and as well as that of a suffix b now coming to e to the uh, uh, for single node vibration a uh, single node uh, torsional vibration or fundamental frequency i told you we have to use the highest of the two values 4.821 and lb is 2.893 meter 
So we have to use this value because in the case of a two node frequency the node occurs somewhere between B and C. So it will be here. So this distance is your LA highest of the two values 4.8 uh, 4.821 meter. So node occurs somewhere around here and uh, LB is uh, 2.893 meter. So this LB, so this is the actual node. This is the actual node. LB is 2.893 meter. I substitute the values, we will be getting the amplitudes for a uh, single uh, node frequency. So node occurs a distance of 2.893 meter from B. So substitute the values and find out the values of uh, the amplitude AC and A suffix. So there is the amplitude of rota C, amplitude of rota B. That's all. Now we will end up this uh, uh, video uh, with another uh, problem that is 18.27. Uh, this is the problem that is given. Moment of inertia of the flywheel 4,000 kg meter square and moment of inertia of the propeller is given. Um, the value of uh, G is given and then the equivalent moment of inertia per cylinder is also given. Okay. Now we will uh, see this another important problem. So we have a number of cylinders, we have a flywheel, we have a propeller. So what we do is we combine all the cylinders into one rotor. So we, we assume that all the cylinders are combined in one rotor here, this rotor A and this is uh, the rotor C, this set of rotor B. The same procedure for what we followed in the earlier example. So as I said, uh, replace the four cylinders by a single rotor at the center of their combined mass. So we are going to replace the all the cylinders as a sing one single combined mass A and we assume that 320 mm to be the torsionally equal and this is that is the chosen diameter. Among we have 320, we have 300, we have 280 and 300. So we go for a 320 mm equivalent diameter that is D value. Uh, so the length of torsional equivalent shaft between the flywheel and the propeller is given by L2. So this is L2. So this expression is this is this is this uh, length is L2 that is between the flywheel and the propeller is L2. So what is the formula similarly? Similar L2 is given by you know, the, the first one that is 4 into D. D is uh, chosen as 320 mm divided by 300 the whole power 4. The same one plus 6. So this is 6 into uh, D that is 320 divided by 280. This value 280 the whole power 4 plus phi into there is phi this length into 320 divided by 3 the whole power 4 whole power finally find the value of L2 and similarly similar to the previous problem we saw here same one the same similar to what we saw in the 3 rota system here also the same uh, method we are supposed to follow okay Um, this is that is IA into LA is given by IB into LB. So you'll be getting you will be getting an expression for LA. So LA is finally found out to be two times that of LB. Again, uh, the same formula is one by IB into LB is given by one by IC square that is uh, into one by L1 minus LA divided by L2 minus LB. So what is this L1 minus LA? So this value L1 minus L so if you in the, in the case of a three rotor you draw a simple uh, diagram where the nodes will be acting uh, similar to the previous uh, problem we have the two node frequency and as well as the three node frequency that is in this uh, sorry a single node frequency as well as two node frequency so similar to the previous diagram so in other words you, you are using the same uh, methodology for this problem also same same uh, So 1 by IC, there is 1 by uh, IB into LB is equal to 1 by IC uh, divided by 1 by L1 minus LA divided by L2 minus LB. 
and you know what is the uh, uh, L1 value L1 value is this value L1 value is 4 meter because we are taking it from here center of just combining all the four cylinders into one mass so we are assuming that the entire mass is concentrated on this particular area of the shaft so this distance to the flywheel will be 4 meters so this value is L1 so L1 that is 1 by L1 is 4 minus LA LA already we found the expression as twice of LB 2 times of LB so a 4 minus 2 LB plus 1 divided by this value L2 which we found here 21.89 meter that is this distance this distance after we we have chosen the common dia this one 320 mm diameter and then finally uh, you will be getting similarly like the minus v plus r minus square root of uh, v square minus 4 uh, divided by 2a you will be getting two expressions for uh, lb and as well as la so for single load frequency i told you we have to take the higher of the two values and for uh, two mode frequency you go for the lower of the two values similar to the uh, previous uh, problem um, then you know substitute the values 1 by 2 pi divided by sort of gj divided by ib into lb and then uh, you know the ib the ib is known j can j may be found out and then g all values also given so this is the expression for a single load frequency that is the value of lb 14.76 meters and this uh, you have to understand this go to this diagram in the previous uh, problem so the node will be acting somewhere around here that is node will be acting somewhere around here so in this area so this is for 14.76 meter which we found here it is 14.76 meter lb lb is 14.76 meter if you assume that node is happening somewhere around here this 14.76 meter and then uh, you know what value of la 2.96 meter see in, uh, in this problem they have uh, used a different formula f1 n1 is equal to sorry fn2 there is a case of a two node frequency it is given as fn2 is equal to fn1 square root of the uh, two values of lb that is 14.76 and 1.48 meter either you can use this formula that is see, see this is lb1 and this is lb2 so the formula is he is using here is fn2 in the case of a two node frequency is given by fn1 that is this value fn1 square root of lb1 divided by lb2 either you can use this value or you can also go for the uh, the one which we, we used in the previous example there is in the case of a two node frequency we use the lesser of the two values that is gj would be ia into la so the same formula may also be used for this for this the answer will be the same that is 21 hertz i think we have completed uh, a few problems an explanation on partial vibrations okay thank you for watching